We're back, and I'm going to see if I can't get the Varia suit before I run out of time in about ten minutes. This is my second attempt at this because my controller decided to be weird and kind of locked itself in that fiery diagonal position thing, and that makes the game near unplayable. This time we picked up the missiles and fair, a fair number of beams, so we are going to be going for what the game told us to get, which is bombs. The most useful power-up in the entire game, just because of the whole bomb jumping and bombing and... Explosions fix everything. But I don't know why I used missiles there, I just kind of felt like it, and I didn't even destroy the thing, and now the space bees are going to kill me. Space bees of my existence. Anyway, doing this a bit more intelligently for the other two. If I don't destroy all three of them, they all come back every time you enter the room. Otherwise, they just kind of stay gone, having gotten the message that you will show no quarter to the space bees. I don't think these enemies show up anywhere else in the game, either. It's like you took out the entirety of a species in one room, so there weren't much of a species. Anyway, bombs really are the best uh, power-up in the game, just because of the whole bomb jumping thing, which you'll be seeing me use later on to get the various out, assuming I don't epically fail. Like that. I'm going to be trying to get as many energy tanks as I possibly can, just because without super missiles, fights are going to take longer, and I tend to get worn down by attrition. Here we have the Space Pirates map data for Brinster, showing us not nearly all of the rooms in this area. But hey, it's a room, and it's something to do. I've noticed the game seems to control better on the, on the gamepad than it does on my DS for some reason. However, it's also led to me failing more often than usual, which... Yeah, like... That there. But, I mean, things like the wall jump are a whole lot easier to pull off. I don't even really have to put much effort into it. It's going to make some parts of the game a fair bit easier. Not any parts I actually needed help on, but... Yes. If I could actually remember what these things look like when I'm go before I go into them, I might not look like a complete moron by dropping down pits that I don't need to. But, the bombs. We should not think about where Samus keeps these. You probably don't want to know. With these, we could, in theory, go get the Varia suit already, but... I'd rather not. I'd like to get the Ice Beam and Power Grip first, because they make my life so much easier in that regard. And also, they're what the game tells us to get next, so there's that. <coughs> bum bum bum. Now, Space Parasites. Everything is better in space. With the bombs, we can miss the door again, because for some reason this area confounds me to no end, and move on through here, <coughs> back the way we came, to where we get to use the bombs for our first power-up getting. I'm going to backtrack and get the energy tank near the beginning with them, too, so you can watch me fail at what I have dubbed the spastic moronic bomb jump, because I can't really do the normal timed proper bomb jump. I can just kind of mash the button and hope for success. Here we have the only other Chozo statue in the game we are actually going to be listening to for the proper sequence of events. Comes down, tells you to go to Norfair, and go get the Ice Beam. Because the Ice Beam is required to freeze Metroids.
I often wondered if you like can get the power bombs before the crash ship before the crashing ship segment at the end and how they'd affect Metroids, but I can't really think of any way you could possibly pull it off. You might be able to get the ones in Criteria during the escape sequence, but that's after them all the Metroids are dead, so it's still fairly pointless in that regard. I will have no brook with platforms that don't let me jump on them. I think part of it is I'm so used to playing through later, later progression with all the fun power-ups that that you do stuff you take for granted later on. Like clinging on ledges and jumping higher than like three blocks. You really get used to them. However, there's no excuse for that there. That's just bad. Coming up on Norfair. I mean, you know, when I was younger, I used to joke that the place was no fair because of all the fire in it and the rooms that are full of fire. That it appears that we are not the only ones here anymore. We are being watched. Because nothing is creepier than a gigantic eyeball on a brain. As Gradius taught us nothing. Anyway, we will be going left to start, despite what the hand set, what the Chozo statue said. Because I could bomb jump, but uh, to get up where we need the power grip for, but the power grip makes my life so much easier. And if I don't keep the charge held while I'm going through here, I'm just going to take hits from everything in existence and look even worse at this than I actually am. Because the last thing you want to see is comical incompetence in a Let's Play. And up to Criteria, where Samus actually landed. We didn't get to control her during that, because that way they don't have to actually do a big sequence where rocks fall and block off the passage. This is the, where you would enter the crashed ship section in Super Metroid. There is a non-crashed ship in the area later on that I've been told is not the crashed ship, despite the fact that it blows up later on. And this is going to be annoying. Makes you wonder exactly where that crashed ship came from. Do I, like, scuttle all their old ships there after the one ship broke, or...? Anyway, we are coming up on the first mystery item. I can never remember which one is which, but... Oh yeah, this one's the plasma beam, because it's a beam. It's one of those things you really wish they'd given you when you got it, as opposed to making you wait for it near the very end of the game. But anyway, we now have the plasma beam. It glitches our suit, and we cannot use it. It also appears I'm getting fairly close to my ten minute mark. This, The first part of this didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would, and the second part is taking longer than I thought it would. I guess I've got an overblown estimation of my own capabilities. So we're going to get back to Samus's ship where we can save, and then I will call it a video. We will of course get to meet Power Grip Dude, the guy whose sole purpose in existence is to look intimidating and give you the Power Grip. Not to be confused with the Power Glove, this is actually a useful item. See, look at him there, just standing there with his hands down between his legs, holding something for us to grab. Grab that, Samus. I think that's the first time I've actually made that joke to myself, ever. Stupid internet. Uh, 
Ah, ledges that we could not have possibly climbed without the power grip. How convenient of them to give us the power grip just beforehand to show how awesome this ability is. Not as useful as bombs, because anything you can do with the power grip, you can do with bombs if you're good enough. Which, I'm not, but that's beside the point. And through here is Samus's ship. I did not intend to stick it that close. That was kind of cool. Anyway, we are saving, and I will see you next time. Later, everyone.